If you've been following additive manufacturing media for a while, this part might look familiar. This is the Variable Resistance Trim Stack, or VRT, designed by Baker Hughes, and it was the winner of the 2023 Cool Parts Showcase in the production category. This part is all about countering cavitation inside of industrial valves. Baker Hughes developed this as an alternative to a conventionally manufactured valve trim uh, that required drilling and stacking multiple metal plates together. Now they 3D print it all as one piece. But Baker Hughes has carried this idea and their understanding of additive manufacturing further in the last few years. I recently had a chance to visit their additive team in Houston, Texas to see some new examples and learn how their thinking has evolved with additive manufacturing. Baker Hughes is an energy technology company that designs and manufactures parts for industrial valves, oil field drilling, uh, downhole sensors, and more. They produce parts both for external customers as well as for their own use inside of their services division. There's a team of about 30 people in Houston that works on developing and manufacturing parts additively. But Baker Hughes has a huge catalog of products. It would not be practical for this team to go part by part looking through all of the different products, all of the different parts, trying to find the matches for additive manufacturing. So it's more often the case that there's some sort of problem, some sort of gap or need that initiates a part coming to this team and being developed for additive manufacturing. So there are three main reasons that Baker Hughes turns to additive manufacturing. The first is the need for a one-to-one -one replacement, and this usually comes down to a supply chain problem. The supplier is out of business, the casting or forging is not readily available, or the lead time is just too long. And additive manufacturing in these situations can be applied to deliver the part more quickly. That is the situation with the VRT. The variable resistance trim stack used to be made uh, using all these different components that had to be joined together. Everything was happening at different suppliers. There was a lot of shipping of parts back and forth, and it used to take months to produce just one VRT. Now, by 3D printing, Baker Hughes has not only consolidated the assembly into just one 3D printable part, they've also brought the production of that component in-house. They can 3D print it on-site in Houston. It doesn't have to go through this huge supply chain and they can manufacture these now in just a few weeks. The second reason that Baker Hughes chooses 3D printing is to upgrade a product. Maybe there's something in the field that's not lasting as long, it's not performing as well as it could be, or they want to add some type of feature or functionality to it. This filter cover for a fluid sampling unit is an example of this. This filter, again, used to be assembled from lots of different components that had to be welded together, and that created a lot of room for error. There were instances where these covers were made and the gaps between those bars got to be too big or too small in some places, and that's a real problem for a filter that can create a path of least resistance if the gap is too big, where a lot more debris is getting through and the filter is not working as well as it should. So Baker Hughes was able to eliminate that quality challenge by going to 3D printing, again, printing the component all in one piece, making sure that each of those gaps is consistent every single time. They also improved the lifespan and durability of this part by adding these ribs on the outside. These provide extra rigidity, help prevent the cover from deforming, again, preserving the gap between these bars so that the filter is going to work as well as it possibly can. And the third reason that Baker Hughes is turning to additive manufacturing is because they've identified some new opportunity, some gap in the market that can be filled with a brand new product developed additively from the start. One example is the Evo trim for industrial valves. This component uses kind of the same principle as the VRT, take one stream of fluid and split it into many smaller ones to control the velocity, uh, control the energy, reduce the noise, but kind of takes that idea even further. The Evo trim uses these three-dimensional geometries to to break one stream of fluid down into eight, and then maybe 32 or even 64 smaller streams. Baker Hughes says that this trim can increase the flow capacity through a valve by up to 160% while also reducing the noise. This allows for a smaller valve equipped with this technology to potentially take the place of a larger valve. And this is an opportunity that Baker Hughes is realizing with additive manufacturing, something they identified because they have this capability. But in each one of these use cases, one of the factors that makes additive manufacturing attractive is the fact that these parts are not needed in huge quantities. At this point, Baker Hughes has developed over a thousand part numbers for manufacturing through additive, but they're only delivering these parts in maybe the single digits up to a few hundred at a time. In the case of some of these oil and gas components, it might be years between when a part is first manufactured additively and the next time that it is needed. So that creates this other challenge. How do you ensure that every 3D printed component is going to be manufactured reliably regardless of when or maybe even where it needs to be made? 
Baker Hughes has made some great strides in this. They've created a whole system not only for how to develop a part for industrial production, but then how to lock it down for future production so that it can be reliably made no matter how long it's been or who might be making it or where it might be produced in the future. If you want to learn a lot more about their golden file system and more about these specific components, check out our full feature article at additivemanufacturing.media or linked in the video description. You can also find our past videos on the VRT and way more cool parts on the Cool Part Show feed. Uh, you'll find that playlist on the Additive Manufacturing Media channel or linked in the show notes. Thanks for watching.